Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, wagertalk TV, right back here with your college football top 25. Wait a second. I got the coach's headset calling me. Oh, no. Top 30 video. It's an ugly card this week, folks. There's only a couple games that even have top 25 teams. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper in the card for you. I'm going to look at top 30 matchups, and that gets us five games for this Saturday, October the 16th in college football. Right here on this video, your top five biggest matchups in college football this week. I'm going to let you know my power ratings and where I see some matchup advantages and situational edges as well right here on Wager Talk TV. Quick reminder, if you want my official best bets, the games that do make the cut this Saturday in college, this Sunday in the NFL, you want to go to my page right now, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. And while you're there, why not consider a direct subscription? In fact, I've got a fantastic two-for-one special right now. Get a full month of college and pro football for the price of one. Normally, it's $149 for college. It's $149 for NFL. With promo code COMBO30, you're getting a two-for-one special. You're getting both college and pro for the next 30 days for just $149 complete. That's right. Buy one, get one free. COMBO30, both college and pro football for a full month for just $149. Combo 30, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Hey, look, there's only one big matchup this week in college football, and that's two top 11 teams, including the number one team in the country, and that's Kentucky at Georgia. So let's take a look at that game first. Uh, it's obviously the most high-profile matchup this week. Uh, Georgia currently about a 22.5 point favorite. That might seem like a big number against a Kentucky team that's allowing just 17.5 points a game, is allowing just 10 points on the road this season. But guess what? It's not high enough, according to my power ratings, my numbers still say Georgia is vastly underrated, the number one team in the country for a reason. And my power rankings favor Georgia by 30 points in this game. So the line value is with Georgia. I've told you several weeks in a row here on this video when we talk about the Bulldogs. I'm not fading them anytime soon. They're the best team in college football. And now with Alabama losing last week, I think everybody realizes that. Keep in mind, a couple of weeks ago, I said there was surprisingly value with Georgia right here on this video when they were laying 18 against Arkansas, closed as low as 16. My rankings, power ratings made it 25. They go out, they win 37 nothing. Last week here on the video, I told you the line was pretty much spot on. I made the rankings around 15, power rating around 15. They beat Auburn 34-10, right as a 15-point favorite. And once again this week, the odds makers are not overinflating it. So you would think we're losing value with Georgia at this point in the season, but we're not. Uh, the line value is still on their side. And I'm not getting in front of a team that allows just five and a half points a game and just three and a half yards per play this season. Uh, Kentucky's been a good offensive team. They've been a very solid defensive team, uh, but they're stepping up in class here. And the line is too short still. We'll continue to take the value with the Georgia Bulldogs minus 22 and a half. Uh, that game kicks off, by the way, at 3.30 Eastern on Saturday afternoon. Now, that was the only true top 20 matchup. There's one other game that just makes the cut, and that's Texas, who's 25th in the coaches in the uh, AP. They're actually outside looking in now in the coaches poll, but we look at the AP. They're number 25, so they barely make the cut. So this is the other official top 25 matchup this week, and that, of course, is Oklahoma State at Texas. And uh, we're going to look, first of all, at the line. It's sitting around five. Um, and it's a dangerous spot for Texas. The big question is, do they respond off that loss last week against Oklahoma, a back-and-forth loss? Now, my power ratings favor Texas by 10 in this game. So on the surface, there is line value, but I think the possible letdown has been priced in, and that's why they're only a five-point favorite right now against an Oklahoma State team that, by the way, controls their own destiny. 5-0 and straight up, they control their own destiny. I don't think they're going to finish undefeated, of course, and that's why they're a five-point dog here. My power range make them a 10-point dog. A very mediocre offensive team, uh, averaging 25 points a game, barely over five yards per play. But what they have been good this year is defensively. Tremendous defensive dog edge here, giving up just 18.5 a, a game uh, versus a Texas team that's allowing over 29. And uh, yards per play really jumps out at you. T Oklahoma State allows 4.5. Texas allows 6.5 yards per play. So – Although the power ratings say there's value with Texas, buyer beware here because, first of all, you're getting a good defensive dog at Oklahoma State. And the big question mark is how does Texas respond after that heartbreaking loss to Oklahoma? You know, playing against teams that lose their first game into the October or later off in about 40% of the time they cover. They're a good play against for decades now. Texas lost early at Arkansas. That didn't knock them out yet. And in fact, had they won against Oklahoma last week, they were back in the driver's seat for a chance at the playoffs. Now that they've lost that second game, they know their season is really over. And often teams come out a little flat. So although the power ratings do favor Texas here, minus 10, be careful. Because the little elves that live in my computer, they don't take in situational analysis. We do that on the side. We look at these numbers, and then we look at the fundamentals and the situational setup. 
power ratings favor Texas, but the situational setup definitely looks like it favors Oklahoma State in this game on Saturday. That's an early kickoff also at noon Eastern. Another reason uh, to be a little careful with Texas there. They might come out flat in that early start. Now, once again, those are your two official top 25 matchups this week in college football. Don't forget, if you want my official best bets, go to my page at wagertalk.com, Steve Merrill. I'm going to give you three bonus games here in which we have top 30 matchups. And once again, if you want to go to my page to get my best bets, check out promo code COMBO30, COMBO30, COMBO30 gets you football, college and pro, two for the price of one, 149 for an entire month of college and NFL combined. COMBO30, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Use the shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Now, there are three other games that were just a bit outside for making the cut as a top 25 matchup. In fact, the closest, I would have to say, is um, Auburn Tigers. They just fell out last week, actually. In fact, Auburn was a top 25 team until last week, and they fell to 26 this week in both the AP and the coaches' polls. So technically, this is a head-to-head top 26 matchup against number 17, Arkansas. And we'll look at this Arkansas-Auburn game here first since it's the closest one uh, that did miss the cut. Um, You know, SEC is loaded. You know, obviously we saw Alabama lose last week, as I referenced. I'm going to get to that game by the second here against Mississippi State. Um, Arkansas is a team on the season that's 4-2, and Auburn 4-2. and So both of them kind of know their their seasons are over. They're both coming off that second loss last week. You know, I joked here when we looked at the Ole Miss and uh, Arkansas game last week, I called that the letdown bowl, is which team was going to have a bigger flat spot after losing to Bama or Georgia. Well, I guess it turned out here uh, that the flat spot last week in that game, at least uh, from the final score, was Ole Miss, because they or Arkansas rather, because they lost 52-51. But it was a back-and-forth shootout. And now that Arkansas is coming off back-to-back losses, including a high-scoring shootout with 103 points last week, you got to be very careful with them. However, there is some line value in this game. Uh, my power ratings favor them by about six points in this one. Current line is only about four. So I do think the odds makers once again have correctly priced in the possible flat spot uh, for Arkansas in this game. I make it a six-point line. Current line is only four, but once again, really dangerous spot uh, for Arkansas after those back-to-back losses, including a high score and shootout. Auburn, of course, coming off that loss to Georgia, as I referenced earlier. Uh, no shame in that loss. Uh, it is their second of the season, though, after losing to Penn State earlier. So both these teams in potential flat spots uh, dangerous game. Power ratings favor Arkansas by six. Current line is four. And that's an early kickoff, by the way, at noon Eastern on Saturday. Hey, let's stick in the SEC. Once again, third game in the SEC this week for this video. And this is another one that just missed the cut. Uh, not because Alabama lost. They're still obviously a top five team. Uh, but because Mississippi State's a little bit on the outside looking in right now in the rankings. But unlike Auburn, a team that fell out of the top 25, Uh, Mississippi State is starting to inch their way closer. They're currently about 29th in the polls, uh, if you look overall, and they're uh, creeping up a bit. And, of course, part of that reason is because they did have the big win against A&M a couple weeks ago, which is looking even stronger now that A&M beat Alabama last week. And this is an interesting scheduling setup here. First of all, my power ratings favor Alabama by only 16. The current line is 17. So on the surface, there's about one point of line value uh, with, with Mississippi State, and 17 is a key number. But the scheduling uh, aspect is very interesting to me. First of all, Mississippi State has the advantage of a bye week coming in. After that upset went over Texas A&M, their best game of the season, uh, they have a bye week. They also beat NC State as a dog back in September. So they have some solid wins this year. Uh, Close loss against LSU by only three points. The bye week to prepare. The big question, though, for me is which Alabama team shows up. This is an Alabama team that's not used to losing. Um, As I mentioned, teams that lose their first game in October or later only cover about 40% of the time over the past few decades. However, that's because those teams are normally out of the national title hunt. Alabama still controls their own destiny. They run the table here in the regular seasons, where they very well likely will. They'll probably be a double-digit favor in every game. Then they're going to have to beat Georgia most likely in the SEC championship. We've seen some look-ahead lines. Georgia's about a four-point favorite on a neutral field. That means Bama's going to have about a 35 40% chance of winning straight up. So most likely Alabama will finish with two losses. I don't know if that's going to be good enough to get them in. But they do, as of now, with that one loss, control their own destiny. So on the surface, they should not be flat this week. Their season is not over, but that's always easier said than done. Uh, So we'll see how Alabama responds. Once again, my power ratings make the line 16. Uh, The betting line right now is 17. That game kicks off Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. Got to look at one final bonus game here, a top 30 matchup for you that just missed the cut of being a top 25. And uh, that's coming up here in just a moment for a nighttime game for you on Saturday evening. Just a quick reminder. If you want my official best bets for Saturday college football, Sunday NFL, 
Go to my page right now, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Don't forget, baseball playoffs are here. I was number one this year in MLB totals at Wager Talk. And the NBA starts in just a few days on this Tuesday. NBA regular season starts next week. So it's a great time to be a client. And if you want football only, hey, that's fine. That's why I put together this combo code for you. Combo 30, 30, combo 30, gets you both college and pro football for a full month, two for the price of one, just 149, combo 30. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Hey, use that shortcut, wt.buzz slash sm. Let's look at the final uh, top 30 matchup for this weekend. And that's actually a, a situation in which the higher ranked team is a dog against the non-ranked team. Now, Baylor's another team that's recently fallen out of the top 25 the past few weeks. BYU is currently in the top 25, even though they're expected to take a huge step down and losing a ton of starters. They only returned like three on offense, five on defense. After that huge uh, winning season last year, everyone really thought they would regress. Five and one straight up, just like Baylor. So they haven't. They're only three and three against the spread. Baylor, surprisingly, is four and two against the numbers. They've actually had the better point spread uh, numbers this year. Uh, power ratings in this game, let's look at that first. Surprisingly favor Baylor by 11 and a half points. And I say surprisingly because the current spread on this game is only around six. So once again, there's no question there's line value with Baylor. Um, 11 and a half bigger, you know, once again, when the computer crunched the numbers, I was a little surprised it came out that big. Uh, current line is six. Look ahead line. There's a week ago, there's a look ahead line on this one at DraftKings. I saw BYU as a one and a half point favorite. It quickly came down to pick them. Um, but that's just how off this line is right now. So once again, a week before these teams played, uh, the look-ahead line over a week ago was going to be BYU as a slight one-point favorite. Now they're currently a six-point dog. And my power rating say it's not enough is actually uh, the numbers favor Baylor by 11.5 in this game. And they're a solid team on both sides of the ball, uh, averaging seven yards per play, allowing just four and a half. Uh, better numbers than BYU on both sides of the ball. BYU surprisingly has actually played the tougher schedule uh, obviously, they play a lot of non-conference games as an independent. They always play some big boys. So although Baylor has better offensive numbers, defensive numbers, even as a Big 12 team, they played the weaker overall schedule. So we'll see how this one plays out. Once again, I wanted to point it out to you. Didn't quite make the top 25 cut, but it's a top 30 game. Uh, my power rating is here for Baylor by 11 and a half. They're currently just a six-point favorite. Uh, that's an afternoon game, by the way, 3.30 Eastern Saturday afternoon. Hey, thanks for joining me as always. Hope you found this video useful. You know, we didn't have a lot of top 25, so I stretched it out a little more for your value. Top 30 matchups this week. Gave you five of them here on this video. Don't forget my official best bets are on my page right now. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get both college and pro football a full month, 30 days for the price of one, both college and pro for just 149 complete with combo 30. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Be sure you're subscribed here to Wager Talk TV. And if you want instant alerts when my fade the public NFL video is ready this weekend, Click the bell when you subscribe. Don't forget to check out that Fade the Public NFL video right here on this channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. And most importantly, leave me a comment below. I love my comments. I read each and every one of them and I reply back. Like, subscribe, and comment below. And most importantly, have a great weekend in both college and pro football. Let me know who you like this weekend. Let me know which games you agree with here in the top 25 where you think there's line value. So comments below, subscribe and like, and check back this weekend for my NFL Fade the Public video right here on Wager Talk TV. Until then, best of luck on Saturday. I'll talk to you again soon.